Well, my friends, I'm Rick, and this is your seat at the table, and we are, of course, continuing our wonderful adventure in a game not traveled or my would-be interstellar frontiers, and uh, we are now looking at Kara Carmichael, our 007, and she is under uh, she is undercover at the Pirate Haven Bar, and the results from the previous cycle was that the pirate ship had that had been there had left, 66 metric tons of, of computers were unloaded and that Kara maybe knows where that co co uh, cargo was unloaded too but you know if we that's not really hard because if you look at the Haven the Haven only has a couple storage uh, storage f uh, prefabs so it's most likely in one of them uh, you don't store things outside because the rules say things get stolen and destroyed if they're not stored properly especially when we're talking things of this nature uh, and so then we're going to go and see does the haven have a broker so this is a general a general question because the it doesn't apply to uh, anything that uh, Kara's uh, stats or uh, information or anything like that, or uh, skill set or anything like that would play. So it's just a straight yes, no, or maybe. And yes, this says search, yes, no, or maybe, but this is the same chart that comes up in a number of places around the, uh, through the game just to make things uh, simpler. So in this case, we are going to, uh, you know, we ignore certain things, uh, the, the caveats, because all we're looking for is the standard answer. Does the Haven uh, have a broker? And 30. 30 is no. So I don't, uh, Kara can't locate him if it doesn't. So there's no broker. So. Can Kara discover who discover which pirate is in of cargo and storage? Because it's possible we can figure out who that person is. We could then, so Kara's bonifier is a plus 15 uh, for this. And I did the math. I should have done the math on her too. I did the math on the others on 15. Uh, we'll just say 15 because it's probably higher than that. She's not really, she's just doing a search. So we're looking for a, in this case, before she can do a negotiation or interrogation or something like this. And I also have to take uh, into account that she is under cover, so I don't necessarily want to blow that cover. So having her ask too many questions or try to figure out a way to, I don't know, broker the cargo might raise questions that I don't really want to pose and put dice to. So odds are the care is going to locate and find information that then I will, then she then passes back to the Ministry of Intelligence who from that point passes it to the appropriate ministry official to follow up on it if that's what our desire is. So 76 and 76 on our chart is a yes. So she can discover who's in charge of the cargo and story. Is for is he, she, it. And I tend to use he as a general because that's my, I'm, I'm a he and that's what I think of. Uh, we haven't gotten to this point, but there are multiple options in Stellar Frontiers for gender. And I know that's not popular today with some people. I don't give a riot, I don't give a rat's ass fart if it's not. But you don't like it kick rocks. I don't need your patron jeans. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't give a damn. Uh, we're talking in the, we're talking 8,000 years in the future. A lot of stuff happens. We have it happening now, and it doesn't affect me personally. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care what you do. I don't care what your neighbors do. I don't care what my neighbors do. As long as it doesn't affect me and mine directly in, in some nefarious way or some threatening way, it's none of my goddamn business. So in this game, you have genetic manipulation on a, the scale that's only dreamed of in science fiction. So you can have entire species that are both genders. You could have humans genetically engineered to be both genders. 
or to be a specific gender. You can have humans that have augmentation and cybernetics and organ transplants that can transfer them from one gender to the next. And there's numerous reasons other than the sexual perverted mindset of some people that might gener cause that to do. Think of the ultimate disguise technology for a spy. The cyber technology at that level actually exists in the rules. It's in the book. It's available if you have the means, the resources, and the technology to implement them. You could have an agent that basically polymorphs himself into whatever gender and, and to a limited extent whatever Spe uh, uh, genome or species they wish to mimic so within reason obviously if you're two-legged you're not going to grow a second set of legs so if you're if you are two-legged uh, bipedal you're not going to uh, to polymorph yourself into a centaurian you're not going to be a half horse half person or, bull, or, bull, or a bull tar half bull and half person you're not but how did that half centaur how did that centaur actually come to be existence. Genetic manipulation on a grand scale. Some place, some point, some point, and, and somebody down through the history decided to create an entire genome that represent, that represent, that, uh, that uh, resembles the centaurs of mythology. And uh, I actually have backstories for a lot of why that and how that came about. And we get into the individual uh, uh, genomes. You know, I, I've been dancing around that a little bit because it gets to be more complicated because then you have multiple races on your planet and generally are melting pots. So everybody that comes in off of those cruise liners don't necessarily have to be human. I just simplified things for, for, simplica you know, for simplification. Uh, I could actually roll for individuals and I don't want to roll 500 individuals. I just don't care. But there are event rolls in here that are, damp that are very specific. This is what came off the ship. You now have, you know, 3,000 bull tars that just arrived on your planet and they want to set up shop. So now your population is now a significantly large percentage of human and a smaller percentage of half bull, half human with all that that entails. Make go that up you will. So that kind of stuff from gender thing also plays out as well. That's why I said he, she, it, because there's alien genders too. And it's only human arrogance and human uh, human uh, 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 stubbornness, and I think of a couple other words that, that I'm not really going to use, that implies that, you know, this isn't a thing. You know, aliens out there can be so exotic, so out there that they have they don't have genders at all. Maybe they rep you know they reproduce uh, uh, you know I don't know by splitting into two I don't know. Potential, you know, scientifically speaking, that is a plausible thing. It actually happens at the microbial level. You know, amoebas split. You know, uh, certain other things split. So the the fact is that all that's on the table. It's just a matter of what you want, where you want to go with it. If you want a, a human-centric civilization in your entire game, you don't want to deal with aliens at all. You can ignore that entire chapter. It's fine. But I actually have the genome. Uh, creation rules in here too to create true aliens so and this is important because this has come up in my exploration on cycle 15 which discovered that one of these damn planets that we have been exploring to utilize turns up there's an industrial there's an industrial population of 63 plus million freaking people and it says very very specifically in the event role true aliens so these are xenophobic true aliens they're not human beings, and they're not human genetically engineered human beings. These are a, an alien race that, that developed and, and grew themselves, and uh, I absolutely know nothing about them. But at some point, I might send a, a team over there, like Xeno Scouts, for example, and have them find out. And once I do that, then I would turn to that subchapter uh, of the genomes and create them from scratch using all the mechanics or using the mechanics as a guideline I just create them for something I want them to be so if I want them to be a population of, of, of one ton bull people uh, that look like minotaurs that, that uh, have you know that are aggressive then that so be it 
Who's to say otherwise? You know, and, and humans have a habit, a tendency to apply things that we understand and know to things we don't. So we could look at some alien race that we've never seen or encountered before, and they remind us of the, myth, you know, the mythological minotaur, and it turns out that uh, they're not even close. They're not even close. Perhaps they're fish. You know, they're, 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 you know, they descended from the local aquatic life, but they just resemble enough of a minotaur for us to, to call them that. Because that is human nature, because we're buttheads, right? So we go back. Uh, can we discover which pirate was in charge? Is she, he, he, she, or it a regular, regular at the bar? Because if she's a reg, if this person's a regular, then Kara could then point out that that person to a another house agent who then can proceed with figuring out how to get her hands on those on that cargo so 42 would be maybe with no modifiers all right now the reason i don't apply the uh kara's 15 percent modifier here is because it doesn't it's not applicable she's not negotiating with a person she's not interrogating person she's not she's not she's not interacting directly with so this is just her basically finding random stuff as as much as we can and so that's basically the end for Kara carmichael's uh event and of course we'll progress from there and figure out what the hell I want to do and keep in mind once again that I can do these in the same cycle so Kara's, Kara's job is done but there's 10 days in a cycle if I want to come back and and have a Kara Carmichael cycle 15.1 0.4, 0.10, I can do that. So I can have her do three or four different things in that 10 day cycle. Uh, in this case, I can also then send a, she could then contact the house back to the to fair or to the to the to fair wind or to the to the the her ministry of intelligence who then sends out somebody to find this person and she point that Carol will point out to and then to move on to a negotiation or something else. Another possibility would be for Kara to then go on a actual search and uh, she's currently she's in an observation operation mode. She could do a search mode at this point. She leaves the bar and goes out in the middle of the night to search the two cargo, uh, the two uh, storage facilities that, that are available and uh, see if she can gain access to them, which, which she should be able to do fairly easily. I, uh, based on our tech levels, they're not going to have a very large, sophisticated su su surveillance and or security system, and why would they? Uh, at most, maybe there's a guard at the door, you know, kind of thing. And she would have to then deal with the guard and then pick the lock or break the lock or somehow gain access to the to the storage facility or the storage prefab to confirm that the product is there. Then at that point, she then sends a message back to the house, assuming she doesn't get caught somehow, which is always a real possibility, and all that that might entail. And at that point, the house decides to send the send in some troops to raid the damn colon, uh, the the haven, and take the stuff by force, which sets a precedent. Uh, my options, preferably, are to negotiate first, use force second. Or should be used last in my opinion or in defense if necessary but it's a preference of how the player wants to run and play the game so anyway i'm rick you're not this is a great monday so far i mean i've had a, a rocky start to get going i'm not gonna lie like i said i i did several takes on a video that kept getting interrupted uh mama cat was in here even though she's not really a mama we just called her that from the beginning and i don't it's stuck uh, she's becoming more friendly, but she literally wanted to, she sat here and rolled around the table and then was not going to get off the table, so she had to go out into the living room with the wife, and uh, then we had a guy out to show up, the delivery truck show up out front, he was lost, uh, like I said before, our house is a, a, our street is a place street, and the next street over is the street, so the same address repeats itself, and it, sometimes people come to the wrong place and uh to make things even worse uh 65 the street 65 no 65th street uh as opposed to 65th place is also known as broadway 
and it's more commonly known as Broadway. It's like Second Avenue, which is up here on the where Broadway and Second Avenue come together, which is just right up now, not not a quarter of a block up the street from me, is uh, or yeah, is uh, a highway, and it has its own street number, but it's called Second Avenue, even though it's also known as some, I don't know, highway such and such, which confuses the bejesus out of people. And then to make things even much more fun, uh, the numbering system in this area, since it's unincorporated, is very weird or haphazard. So two houses down, their number, you would think two houses down would be a 61 or a 67, depending on which way the ascending, descending are going. Uh, no, it, it, it's uh, there's just like 12, 14. And, and so if Second Avenue is the street that's over here, the next street down, which is only two blocks, not even two blocks away, is sixth, is sixth. Until you get to Broadway, then it becomes something else. It's Cornell Street going into into no, Des Moines proper as instead of uh, unincorporated Des Moines. Just saying. Anyway, until next time, you guys have yourself a great weekend. Or a great week for whatever that matters.